Welcome everybody to These Aren't the Nerds You're Looking For. Lorenzo Fonts in here with Kevin. Hey. And we also have... Hey, how's it going, man? Doing well. We also have sitting with us a special guest, Zach. Hey. What's going on, man? Not much. Zach, you're from uh, Reclone Podcast, right? Yeah, Reclone Podcast. Uh, it's another uh, Clone Wars rewatch podcast. Yeah, Indeed. you guys have a you guys have a really fun approach where your two co-hosts either haven't seen the episodes or haven't seen them in a long time. You give a little brief breakdown, watch the episode, and then come back with a whole bunch of questions and uh, often some what the fucks. Yeah, it's a lot of uh, me me kind of guiding them through Star Wars in general, kind of through Clone Wars of. Uh, uh, here's this crazy thing, and they're like, "What the fuck?" I I recently had to explain what Mandalore was, which oh, which shit. was which was just so which was a surreal experience to me because I was like, it feels like such a big part of Star Wars, and they were literally yes. like, "We don't know what Mandalore is." Did they know what a Mandalorian was? They knew it was a TV show. Ah, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> First yeah. introduction to to any Mandalorian being knowledge of a TV show existing. It's interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's an interesting way about that for sure. Yeah, so it shows a lot of that is uh, us going through Clone Wars one at a time uh, and getting their first reactions and then my reaction uh, after not having seen it for like a couple years. Yeah, it's a super fun show. I enjoy, I enjoy it every other week, right? Every other Wednesday? What days? Yeah, we're every other every other Monday. Every other Monday. Yeah. Excellent. Very nice. Well, hey, I would okay. like to thank you for coming on. Uh, you gotta you gotta help me keep Lorenzo in check this week. Last <laughs> week at the end of the episode, he was ranting and raving about food served on uh, wood plank platters instead of actual plates. And was that uh, just last week? That was just last <laughs> week. So I think that's how I they uh, they food. serve food on uh, Kashyyyk. Is uh, is like that? Ooh, fair enough. Ooh. Yeah, see, but I I expect that from them. There's a lot of wood <laughs> planks around. <laughs> On our civilized Earth, I want me a plate. Okay, <laughs> it's all right. We're not gonna start this again. <laughs> no, we're gonna start into an episode called Wookie Hunt. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. Speaking I like of Wookies, to double check. <laughs> yes, uh, this is uh, season three, episode twenty-two. This is in fact the season finale of. Uh, Season 3, which aired on March 26, 2011 in the UK and April 1st, 2011 in the US and Canada. Um, Another staggered release there. Uh, Basically, the conclusion of a little uh, two-parter here where Ahsoka got lost, right? She got herself lost. Following up on Padawan Lost. Yep. So we're still following her around, being hunted by Trandoshans. (laughs) Yeah? Now... I say Trandoshan. Is that wrong? Really? Yes. <laughs> that must yeah. be wrong. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I would fair say enough. Trandoshan. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm with Lorenzo. The narrator says Trandoshan. Yeah. The narrator says Trandoshan hunters. So hmm. I'm going to stick with that. I'm sticking with that as my official. Yeah. I'm going to stick with my guns. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> So I wasn't here for uh-huh. the first uh, for the episode before this. Uh, did you talk about any like film references in that discussion? We did not. No. Okay. Which, yeah. So what you got? Uh, so uh, I was wa- I watched uh, the most dangerous game from uh, 1932, mm-hmm. uh, and then Predator from 1987, which uh, I had never seen before. Okay, what? I think I remember us bringing up Predator. Mm-hmm. I did. I think both of those did get br- brought up. Okay, uh, wonderful. Yes, yeah, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because I brought up pretty much every various stuck on an island and being hunted for sport sort of movie. Yep, yeah. yep, so yep, yep. That is right, because we, we had Most Dangerous Game, Battle Royale, Hunger Games, um, Running Man. Those are, we kind of, I, I definitely kind of looped my way around all of those. I was like, well... If you don't like Hunger Games, well, there's Battle Royale. If you don't know ba- Battle Royale, it's the same thing as Running Man. They're all the same thing. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep. Yep. Side note, I saw Running Man on, I don't know, Amazon Prime or Netflix or something the other day mm-hmm. and definitely tried to convince my wife to watch it again. And she was like, eh, I'm good. We saw that one. So <laughs> it's definitely a silly movie. If you do get around to it, 
It's fun. It has, yeah, it has aged not well in the best of ways. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I so, can agree with that if I can. Yeah. If I can wrap my head around that one. So. Oh yeah. It's so silly. Anyway, so jumping into Wookie Hunt. As we continue on here, the fortune cookie at the beginning of the episode, a great student is what the teacher hopes to be. Now, Zach, if you remember from the last time that you were on, we forced these fortune cookies uh, onto someone as yep. as though they actually said actually said it. And um, in my first viewing of Clone Wars way back in the day, I just thought that all of these were Yoda quotes, but this one, I actually feel kind of falls into something that Yoda would say especially oh, yeah. after after the advice that he gives old man Luke in uh Last Jedi. Last Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, cuz Yoda in Last Jedi Yoda says uh, I believe we are what they grow beyond, I think is what he says. Something like that. Yes. Failure the best yeah. teacher is also. Mhm. So, yeah, I'm going I'm going Yoda on this. I agree with you. You You have Lorenzo. Nope. You have no arguments from me there. That's pretty much where I was leaning. Yeah. This one's pretty darn straightforward in that regard. Wonderful. Three way tie for Mr. Yoda. (laughs) Indeed. You think it would be Mr. Yoda? Because that's his master Yoda. Master. Mr. Yoda. Mr. Master. Mr. Master. Master. (laughs) Yoda. (laughs) <laughs> anyway what's uh so he's what's like going on in our s- go ahead uh, nope so i was gonna make a mr mystery joke but we're gonna move on <laughs> Master Mister? That, i i thought better of it <laughs> so. it happens uh, uh our news reel is basically a yeah. recap of padawan loss is that correct oh yeah 100 percent. like not even trying to set anything up just fully in and then the episode just kicks right off after that and we just basically start pretty much where we left off we hit the ground running (laughs) quite literally (laughs) yeah zach i'm glad you laughed at that (laughs) somebody had to so i i do want to bring up the the wikipedia brings up something i don't recall from last week's episode where this okay refers it it starts off the official summary as in the briar jungles of island four yep Uh did we is that something that was ever established in the last episode? I don't remember that. Yes, because we we go from Felucia, and then uh, they, like, Ahsoka's on the ship. The ship goes somewhere, and in the episode, it doesn't really explain that it's going to a moon of Trandosha, right? Right. Uh, it's just somewhere else. And then it's called Waska, right? Is that right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, when they when they do land like or come down to the planet, the moon rather, uh, one of the Trandoshans is like, "Oh, we'll take them over to Island Four or some shit." <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. Then they drop them at the bottom of the ship. All right. I guess it makes Island me wonder because it, it's yeah. like. Like it, it's Island Four, the like Jedi Padawan Island, and then like they they sorted everybody else onto other islands. Like, what's on the other islands? What's right? How many islands are there? Like, like what's, what's on Island One, Two, and Three? Yeah, and like, how, like what? How, what's the rest of them? Because we'll we'll get to the trophy room later, but the trophy room is really varied, and it's like, are they all hunting those here? Yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure. One of the comments that Lorenzo and I had last week is that they, it's weird. Because they've already hunted all of the things that they're hunting. Yes. Like they I don't already, get it. They already caught Ahsoka mm-hmm. and her three uh, Jedi friends, two friends now, and uh, apparently a Wookiee. And yep. uh, they catch them. They put them on a ship. They bring them here. They let them go. They hunt them again. Yep. I totally agree. It's... It was weird in contrast to the most dangerous game because in the most dangerous game it has a clear like okay he shipwrecks you first and mm-hmm. then he hunts you and he hunts you with these very specific rules and so it's like oh this is all internally consistent whereas these guys they already won they got gotcha. like, right. you like you mm-hmm. you were snatched like they won already like, could have just shot Ahsoka to begin with and then you wouldn't have to like 
re hunter. I guess it could right. be like the the good Trandoshans go off world, hunt things, bring them back, and then like the young Trandoshans are like taught to hunt or like hor- uh, hunt for sport on their safe planet. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it seems kind of lame. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. It's like one of those weird situations where like a rich guy pays somebody to shoot an elephant and then they get to take a picture in front of it sort of thing. Yeah. Right yeah. Like that. Like Cecil That's, the Lion. Yeah, that situation. Yeah. Uh, which yesterday was the three year anniversary of the death of Harambe. So dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on from that, uh, so where where do we start here? We basically yeah, start with nothing. Ahsoka still on the run. Yeah. <laughs> yep, Ahsoka's Harambe, on the run. Yeah. Uh, this this Trandoshan is chasing after her. She does this really cool maneuver where she hides like underneath this briar. Apparently, I thought it was like a branch or like a a thorny thing. Uh, yeah, big branch. Yeah. And uh, he quote unquote loses the scent. I don't know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Dardad comes down and he's like, yeah. "Where's that fucking lady at? Where's that? Did she killed my son? I want her hide." And right. uh, sneakily, she evades. They just leave. like in Predator, she hangs under the branch, <laughs> just like in Predator. I thought that was, uh, I thought that was like a mud thing. It's both. He does the mud oh. thing to hide from the the heat vision but there's another mm-hmm. bit where he's on a log and the pre- and predator's coming and he's like oh shit what do i do and he hangs under the log while mm. predator walks over it's just like predator excellent <laughs> uh so garnak dar's father rolls off in basically what i imagine my head looks like the little floating ship that dr robotnik floats around in essentially mm. it even has a smiley face on the front yep it which does. is interesting and the nose uh, is like a winch. Yeah. For no yeah. reason. Yeah. What are they winching with that? Uh, <laughs> logs. Maybe it was a reused I, asset or something. It didn't. Yeah. It doesn't make sense that they have a winch there. I'm they guessing that like they, you know, maybe they like when they're flying around, they like winch it down, you know, or because uh, there was there definitely was like one scene last episode where. Um, the briar patch was too thick, so maybe they like mm. winch. They run in and winch some shit around some thorns and okay. rip right. it out, right? Sure. Um, yeah. Other than that, it's just so that it has a nose with a little dangly hook <laughs> on it. That's all I got. Sure. Yeah. Ahsoka returns to the cave, right? Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where Jinx and Omer are waiting for yes. her and Khalifa. Khalifa. Is is no longer around. No. One of them makes the, the comments like, oh, we had feared the worst. Where's Khalifa? Yeah. Um. Like, oh, we're surprised you're back, but where's where's our friend? We don't want you. <laughs> right. We want our friend. Why did you not die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, we knew her better. She's been here longer. So uh. we, we get another uh, explaining the new plan scene, uh, yep. as we had often... Uh, last week in Padawan Lost, it was kind of things happen, talk about a plan, try to execute plan, talk about new plan. Uh, so so that's what we got right now. And the new plan is to attack the dropship because Ahsoka brings up to, I think, Jinx, like, hey, you said that this dropship comes like every two days. We know where it We know where it makes the drop. Let's just head there, attack the ship. There's not that many... Uh, not that many bad dudes on the ship. Like, we can overtake it. They'll be surprised. They'll never expect it. Uh, so, that's what we get. We cut over to the beach. The ship arrives. Uh, this attack begins. Ahsoka jumps on the, like, front windshield of the cockpit. Like a Which spider. I love. I, I love that there's no defense against that. The defense was the pilot <laughs> went, wow. Oh, uh, what is that? <laughs> what are you doing out there? Like they don't even have like windshield yeah. wipers. Like they couldn't even like nope. do anything to kick her off. <laughs> All they can do is just stare and be like, "Oh god. Go kill it." No one tried That's that it. before apparently. <laughs> it was a pretty hefty jump. I will say that. Now, I expect this out of Ahsoka, but um these these other 
Force users are supposed to be younglings, which Mm -hmm. we definitely discussed that they're way too old to be younglings. So either they've been here a long, long time, or my understanding of younglings and Padawans is completely incorrect. Uh, Because Jinx seems like he's like 24. Okay, I don't think he's 24. I think they're Ahsoka's age. I I think they've been there a while, but I I don't think... But he's like a... He's like a James Vanderbeek teenager sort of status, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. twenty four. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So all right, yep. So anyway, uh, um, Jinx and Omer <laughs> fight one Trandoshan. Trandoshan, I don't. You can we discuss that they they they're kind of simultaneously okay at fighting and also the worst. Yes. Like, Yes. Oh, we get like some, some we get some really bad fighting later that I'm gonna point out. But oh uh, yeah, please go it, ahead. It keeps happening where like somebody will land a punch, and there's a pretty sweet punch that happens where like they both get kicked off at some point and like fall into separate walls. Mm-hmm. And then I forget who is who, but one of them jumps up, the other like force assists and yeah. pulls him for the punch. That's pretty cool. That was so fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah. And Omer then they gets punched like get... three quarters of the way across the ship. Yeah. Right. Like that is one <laughs> strong lizard man. Yeah. It's kind of like a weird back and forth where it's like when necessary, they are very powerful. And when needed, they get totally whooped. Yeah. So. Yep. For sure. I definitely yep. also started to get bored of Trandoshan walks up with a gun. The Jedi... He's like force push and the gun flips out of the way. They re aim yes. the gun. They force push and the gun's <laughs> out of the way again. It's like, okay, we've we've done this quite a few times. We <coughs> and this is only the start of the episode. <laughs> yep. This is very, very true. It's only the yeah. start. Yeah, but like you uh, said, some of the like force like kick stuff was like real cool and like the, the set piece of like the ship and like the ship's moving and like Ahsoka right. h- Ahsoka hits the controls and that, that shifts the ship and that affects the the fight outside. Like that was all super cool. Yeah, like, visually, it's very exciting, and yet, for some reason, I I kind of agree with you. Like, visually, it was, there was a lot happening, and I was down for it, and yet, for some reason, I just didn't, I wasn't there entirely. I was just like, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Let's see where this goes. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Which, the ship crashes. Uh, They all jump out. Ahsoka, right before the ship crashes, does deploy out whatever... She pushes the button to open yeah. all compartments. All compartments, and then they discover that there's only one prisoner that was on the ship. Yeah. Okay. So do they, or do they just discover one survivor? Right, because the ship does crash, and they land, and their uh, Omer's like, "Well, I guess we won't be taking that ship." Right. And uh, uh, they hear something, and. Ahsoka's like, oh, it's a Wookiee. It's a survivor. And then, so we meet a Wookiee who is currently unnamed, but uh, is tall and handsome and has a bandolier <laughs> slash carrier bag. Um, yes, and then I, we. I wonder who that could be. I'm not really sure. <sighs> uh, unnamed. We don't know the yet. Unnamed Wookiee. The bandolier doesn't make sense to me. Why'd they let him keep the bandolier? <laughs> it's a. It's a messenger bag. He totally has a messenger bag. It just looks like a bandolier. This looks like this something that you could bag? buy at Galaxy's Edge, to be honest. <laughs> like sure. the bandolier messenger bag. Uh, uh, huh? Maybe? Yeah. Uh, maybe? Sure. Sure. In my opinion. I'll, I'll let you know next week. <laughs> yeah. Um. So... <laughs> At this point, we just have, like, a hard cut to basically the same scene, but now it's daylight, and now the lizard people are there, and um, they drag a dead body out of the ship, and one of them says to Dardad, like, oh, the the uh, the crew's dead, and there was only one prisoner, and it was a Wookiee, and he's not here. So this is where we learn that there was only one prisoner. I guess this is because mm-hmm. it's... A Cartoon Network show, so it couldn't be like there was like a hundred people on board and only this Wookiee survived and the other ninety nine right. died. Yeah. Right. Only the bad lizard people died. Mm-hmm. Yep. On accident. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Um. I, 
I just like that there's that big ass drop ship just for one prisoner. Like, regardless yeah. of regardless of how many book uh, tickets have been booked on this flight, they're like, <laughs> fuck it, we're not reassigning you. <laughs> we're wasting all this fuel for the one of y'all that made it on this plane. Thank you for flying, kidnap drop ship. Kidnap yeah. drop ship. <laughs> well said. <laughs> so then do we cut back to the cave yeah and then we just uh, cut straight back to the cave and it's night again <laughs> yeah, yeah it's night time uh, this is when we get chatting with our prisoner yeah. who we get Ahsoka a- of course understands uh, Shire Wook Shire Wook yeah I, I like to imagine that at the like at the Jedi Temple Ahsoka was like taking an elective in Wookiee and she's like oh this will never come in, come into use I just like Wookiee like, like it's like Thor taking uh, Groot as an elective Groot. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like yep yeah this all makes I sense I definitely made that parallel and then I was thinking in my mind like I wonder how close because this dialogue is like similar to uh, solo a Star Wars story like we have these two scenes of one oh. like an introduction to Chewbacca and like Chewie being like you know my name is Chewbacca or whatever and then uh, Chewie and the translator sitting around a campfire like talking about his homeworld in this clan and what's going on and yada 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 and he was and he was uh, you know taken prisoner and I wonder if anybody making solo a star wars story was aware of this episode and or kind of cross-reference the the growls and moans and whatnot i'm thinking not but that's so interesting the story i'm thinking the story group knew whether any of the above the line filmmakers shall we say like the actual director writer the the writing crew i feel like would have some dialogue there let's also remember that ron howard was literally brought in at the 11th hour i'm sure he was just directing the shit out of that and was just like this is what the scene needs moving on with life well i can Um, understand that but i'm also thinking like um you know it's not ben burt that does the wookie mixing mixing anymore i don't know if it's matthew wood and Mm -hmm. matthew wood worked on this tv show you know, so did he use uh, Zach earlier? You said like uh, like a recy- recycled asset. Did they yeah. use recycled? You know, whatever Wookie language sound bit number eight for like this when when Chewbacca is talking about the same thing. You yeah. know what I mean? That's so interesting. That I hadn't thought of question. that. I'm sure there's some sort of internal logic behind the way the sounds work. I don't, I don't think, think so. I think there's some I to I don't think there's like hey this equals this per se. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a I don't think there's a one to one correlation the way say Elvish or High Valyrian or Dothraki have been created, right? Like into full languages. But right. I do think there's still some sort of say internal logic, right? Okay. Um, I think there are some sort of like sound reference boards because I don't disagree with you, Kevin. As soon as the scene happened, my note was between this and Solo, Chewbacca is really bad at not getting captured. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. What is up with that? <laughs> Who keeps capturing Chewbacca and how? Right. Like what? I think he's just what? gullible. Aww. He's just very bad. Aww. It's like it's like a, a half-skinned lamb on a rope with a net. He's hungry. Oh, so he's getting he's getting T-Rexed like in Jurassic Park, is that? I mean, it happens in Return of the Jedi, so we've seen this including this episode, <laughs> we've seen it happen at least or we know that it's happened at least 3 times to him. So he is the simple jack of Wookiees. Yeah, he's just hungry, man. He's the hungry jack knew. of Wookiees. <laughs> he doesn't have any manwitch or wookiee witch or whatever or porg. Porgs. Or porgs. The man loves his porgs. Or the right? loves his porgs. Yeah. He's hungry. That's it. it makes sense. He's that always thinking sense. with his stomach. <laughs> or his mouth. Or whatever that line is. Dig with your All hands and not with your mouths. <laughs> so what else is discussed in this cave after we learn that this Wookiee is Chewbacca? The new plan. New plan. Yep. Yep. 
And it the, so what the is new, new plan, plan is for Chewie to go back to the ship and um, rip some shit out of various parts of the ship and build a transponder with it uh, so he can contact his home world. Uh, do they name drop Kashyyyk here, or do they just call it his home world? I don't remember. I, I don't think they think do. They d- I, yeah, I think they just... I don't recall, actually. Yeah. I don't either. But, um, yeah, so then we cut to a scene where their our crew is sneaking up on the on the wreckage, and it's just Ahsoka and Chewbacca that go in, and then we get, here's a surprise, the, uh, the Trandoshans, they, they come down for our, for a hunt in the middle of the night, because typically they only hunt during the day. (laughs) And, uh, this is basically one sniper that's dropped off, and, uh, Ahsoka almost gets shot. Here's the thing, though. Uh, when we are introduced to Chewie, and then I think at least one or two other times, did you guys catch the musical cue? I swear to God it was, like, the theme, like, the Force theme. Yes, it was yes, the Force yeah. theme. 100% it's okay. the Force theme. <laughs> so is this is this telling us that Chewbacca has the Force? No, I think it's just lazy. Yes, yeah, I agree. Uh-huh. <laughs> there, There's no full... Kashyyyk theme, even though there is a battle on Kashyyyk, which has its own theme. Right. Uh, in a movie that takes place chronologically after this, but came out before, so... I mean, you could use, like, the Millennium Falcon theme. You could use, like... There's so much other stuff you could use rather than the Force. Yeah. I think uh, tying it to anything Force, Luke... Jedi related kind of like I think musically just brings it home. I think that was the intent. I'm not saying yeah. it was good. I'm just saying I think that was the intent. Yeah, I think their intent was, oh, you remember Star Wars, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. That's I good do. because this is the 70th episode uh, chronologically <laughs> and up to this point I was not 100% <laughs> you know, like, is this Wars? Is this not Star? This is a good show about people that look like they might be in Star Wars. I'm you glad never th- know when some tired parent with a two-year-old is just like, "Hey, what's this on?" and then turns this guy on, and then a big teddy bear shows up, and they're like, "Well, that looks a lot like," and then it plays the music, and they go, "I think that is Chewbacca. <laughs> I think that is." Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Let's just say we are not the casual fan base, shall we say? Yeah. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Yeah. yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think I can go with that. I, th- I think there's a whole world of casual fans that are just like, what's this about? Who is this lady? Why <laughs> don't I know any of these people? Oh, well, that looks like somebody I recognize. It's is a it? big and walking then, carpet. Right. <laughs> but uh, the know. reason... The reason I brought it up is because Ahsoka's like, sweet, we got our shit. Like, let's go back to camp. And she just wants to run out of run out of the wreckage. And Chewie's, like, holding back. And uh, right. she almost gets shot. And Chewie's like, hmm, I'm smarter than you are. Um, but we get another one of Zack's favorite moments of some, some force-pushing blasters out of the way. Uh, Chewie is the one that ends up subduing this Trandoshan. And uh, I don't know. He punches him in the head or something and yeah so they take him captive we are back at camp and um based on a couple of comments from last week's episode i really thought that they like moved camp around because they're like quote unquote always on the run and being hunted yep but nah they're just chilling they got there's like no this. scent in that cave they can't find the scent in there that's not like they uh, sit there all the time <laughs> Remember last week, too, like, it's through the briar patch, so, like, no Trandoshan is like, oh, they, they went through the briar patch, they're <laughs> gone forever. But, I mean, it's through Why'd the briar patch. Why'd we build this island on a briar patch? <laughs> it's through the briar patch from where they were at at that point, but this is clearly, like, up a very long branch and then in right. a magically suspended uh, fire basket. Okay. Nope, can't cross the briar patch. That's mm, can't go over. That's it. how it goes. Nope, you can you can go through it. You can go under it. You can't 
can't go over the briar patch. There's no Z axis on <laughs> Island Four. Nope, not at all. <laughs> awesome. Even though they're in ships that fly up and down. Yeah. It there's there's an upper limit. It's like Superman sixty four, you know, where there's just like that green wall of shit that you couldn't fly through or above or. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. But it's like right below their little cave. Right, exactly. There's just like a little hole for a cave that Superman could not fit through for some weird reason because Superman 64 was one of the worst games ever made. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to have to I'm going to have to go and get that. Please do. Please get N64 and if you've never played Superman 64, it is without a doubt. Even as a dumb how old would I have been? Like 12-year-old? 13 year old i don't fucking remember i'm the guy who loves that stupid episode one pod racing game in which there is no variation to that game what's over there's like six tracks 10 racers that's it nothing else nothing else at all i have played both that in, in 64 and that stupid pod racing game oh that pod racing game is spectacular oh I yeah i have it it's like it's right over here right behind me the superman 64 game hunt it down it makes no sense. There are no goals. Metropolis gets filled with a gas that you can't do anything with. You can't fly around. I don't remember what any objectives were because I just kept getting stuck hitting walls of gas that Superman couldn't penetrate through. I got nothing. Superman cannot fly through farts. It was so, so bad. Anyways, Briar Patch, they're in the cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Chewie's making his transmitter, correct? Yeah, he builds his transmitter, but it doesn't seem to be working. So then, also, he's using ET. It's basically tech. like the like, ET speaking like, spell. Like, yeah, that's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, ET speaking spell tech, and then the thing doesn't seem to work. I don't know what's uh, what's the dude's name? Jinx. Jinx is talking to Omer, and they're like, "Let's use the prisoner to." our advantage so we get another plan now the plan is to trick uh the this prisoner into calling his buddies and saying he needs like uh trained ocean uber ride right and then they'll just mug the uber driver and steal his car um yep where they're going to go at that point i don't really know we find out later and it doesn't seem like a great plan it's like steal a cop car and drive back to the police station. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Pretty much. So yep. uh, that's essentially what we have going on here over the next several minutes is uh, it's morning again. There's a lot of like either things happen in the morning or things happen at night during a campfire. Right. So it's essentially the speed of Game of Thrones season eight, but in one single episode. Is that what? Yeah. I guess it does kind of connote like. She was here for a really long time. Like, she just was stuck on this island for, like, weeks at least. Okay. Maybe? Yeah. And so when you see, like, Anakin, like, freaking out, it's like, well, yeah, she was fucking gone for forever. (laughs) But it was really just 22 minutes for us. Yeah, but it was really 22 minutes. (laughs) Right. It was 22 minutes, but maybe weeks? (laughs) Maybe not? Maybe two days? I don't know. I Hmm. can't tell. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of speed travel in this this show. Yep. What do you, th- what do you think eight. they're doing in the meantime? Because it's like come up with a plan at the campfire, and then I guess sleep, and then like get up and do the plan, and the plan doesn't work out, and then go back to base and just hang out until you can build a campfire again. I guess so. Because what are we like? We're only halfway through the show, and we're on plan three. Is that where we're at here? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I yeah, also imagine two uh, plans. Uh, Ahsoka's like updating them on like uh, recent politics and like gossip and stuff. And oh, there's this Anakin guy. He's pretty cool. He's he's uh, he's a little he's a little rash. I don't I don't know, but he, he he's definitely a good guy. Oh, there's a there's a there's a a new chancellor. Uh, he seems great. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> so the two younglings, they're they're younglings, but not padawans, right? There's no masters for them to get updated on if they got killed. Correct. Yes. Okay. 
because that would be fun news to hear. Like, oh, how's this master doing? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how's uh, master? I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, spoiler alert. I don't know how to tell you this, but uh, done. he dead. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, Jinx. I, I, I met this guy named Jar Jar Binks. He was like the coolest guy. Is he still like the coolest guy in the in the galaxy? Uh, he kind of gave away all the set its powers, but sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Is that, is that why we're we're still stuck here? Executive powers. That's, yep. Yep. Sorry, Omer. Sorry for that one. <laughs> mm. I was going for a jinx thing there, but that's cool. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I feel like nope. both of them don't have personality. Like, I can't tell them apart. Oh, I have no idea who's who. Yeah. No clue. Other than they're they're different species, I feel like right. they're the same character. Yes, yeah, because even the fact that the two of them are always fighting one character and they still suck ass at it is yes, yeah. Yep, they're just one person split into two personalities. Well, I will say there is a there is a nice moment for Omer later that we can fast forward to real quick. So uh, do it. Let's see. They try to execute the plan of trick this lizard guy. Uh, they need a little Wookiee persuasion. Uh, these these younglings are pretty adept at Jedi mind trick, which is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they Jedi mind trick him into saying, like, yo, I need an Uber. Like, come pick me up. And then they mug the Uber driver. Uh, they kill everybody. They steal the dude's, the dude's uh, shuttle, I guess is what it is. And they fly back up to, like, the Trandoshan home base. Mm-hmm. Uh... Like I said, they fly back to the police station. So then this starts, like, another battle with, like, more Trandoshans. And um, you see in the background, Omer is just, like, flying away on the shuttle. Yep. (laughs) That's right. He's like, cool, guys. He's like, Handle that. (laughs) I guess he got, like, another Uber fare or something. And then he's like, oh, shit, I'm going to go make some money. Uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> he realized it was a bad plan. It was like, wait a minute. They're all here. We we went to the place where they all were. Right. <laughs> and there's only three of us <laughs> and a Wookiee. Why did we do this? This seems, this seems not good. We want to stay away from these guys. And we flew straight to them. Mm-hmm. Jumping back just a little bit, I do like the comment Ahsoka has where it's like, their hearts are in the right place, but we'll see how this plan goes. Chewie, you're going to have to join us, otherwise they're all going to die. Yeah. Uh, Is that what she said? Because I thought she said, well, I don't know. And he's like, okay. Right. Something like that. There's there's a, a light sort of like, uh, these guys are sort of coming to, I guess. Yeah. Because at first they were like, yeah, we thought we'd be stuck here forever. And then you showed us the way. Like. That is very true. You gave us faith in ourselves and made us think that we weren't little turds anymore. Yeah. Yeah. This is when people complain about the dialogue for, like, Last Jedi specifically. I'm like, series whole, guys. Series whole. Like, (laughs) what are you guys talking about? It's very, very true. Like, like. All six prior movies, or, or first two trilogies, this show, mm-hmm. I mean, we weren't working, working with fucking David Mamet here. Yeah. And even David Mamet worked on <laughs> episode three. <laughs> and even that one was like, for reasons we do not know, she is dying. That is a <laughs> line. That's an actual written line. I don't know what... Like, hey, it totally no. makes sense. It makes sense to me, man. Like the droids, right. these medical droids have not encountered this situation yet, so <laughs> it is literally a situation that they do not understand. Now, moving forward, like <laughs> if this happens again, it would be like y- you guys are just pulling a Padme here. Like they're she's being Sadness. Padme, and they're like, "What do you mean?" Like, oh, she's like Sadness, man. She's lost the will to live. Yeah, like that's that's what it that's is. It. Never mind that she's the mother of two. You know, but. <laughs> Beyond that, fuck those kids. Fuck them. I'm going to die. <laughs> like, that's terrible. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a terrible, literally what happens. Terrible thing to say. You know who is not a mother of two? <laughs> Dar's dad. Oh. Nope. He is also not a father of one anymore. He's not a father of one, yeah. Aww. 
I so love he... Dar's dad's coloring. Like the coloring on, on the transitions is pretty good. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. Dar's dad looks fucking sick. He is yeah. awesome. Yeah. He's got like some red spikies on his head. He's and, like pale uh, and like gray. Yeah, he's, pale. he's got extra like lining on the front of his face sort of thing, right? Yeah. Like some different colorization happening on the front of his face. So. Yeah. Did, yeah, yeah. Did either of you guys look him up on uh, Wikipedia? Because I no. definitely did not because I didn't even write his name down. I just call him Dardad. Dardad. Garnack is his name. Just if you. Garnack. That's, that's all I got to be on that. Yeah. Okay. Garnack. Fair yep. enough. No, so yeah, that's all. Yeah, we are up on uh, the mothership, uh, which is called like the Ubrican. Is that what this is? I didn't even catch that. I have no idea. No. It is the uh, Ubrican floating fortress. I did not catch that at all. Was that established in the last episode? No, no. Okay, I got not at all. That. But uh, so we have a fight starting on the platform between Chewie and uh, Jinx and some Trandoshans. And um, then we have another ship that arrives, right? Yes. Yeah. Is that I what, think they, that they, what happens at they get into trouble first. They're like, oh, no, this was a bad idea. And then and the then, ship arrives. Right. Dar's dad comes out and he's like, yo, we're going to kill all of you and add you to our collection. You will make a, f- make a fine addition to my collection. Uh, then the ship arrives. And it is some Wookiees and uh, Sugi and yeah, Sepius. Yeah, a couple of hunters. Yes. From an episode that you guys talked about recently, right? The Seven Samurai episode? Uh, it was a while ago, but we definitely talked about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was uh, that one just called Bounty Hunters, that episode? I uh, think it's so. actually called Seven Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not, not even hiding it. They're like, yeah, this is... We're just calling this episode Kurosawa. It Wait, opens why? with, like, dedicated to Kurosawa. It definitely right, does. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Fair. And then you watch the episode, you're like, that wasn't even necessary. There are so many other episodes that do literally the same thing with other properties such as the most dangerous game slash running man slash predator slash yeah. battle royale slash hunger games although this predates hunger games yeah did uh really. did you two watch it's the, the uh, games. did you two watch the like behind the scenes interview about this episode with dave filoni so i used to watch them all and then the dvd set f- that i have for season three doesn't include that so i'm i'm a little behind on those what you get uh, they're all on StarWars.com um, on the uh, the episode guide for each page. Um, okay. And so this one was uh, he was talking about he was like, oh well, we need all these Wookies to come say come save them, and he, and he was like, ah, Wookies don't really have like spaceships outside of that one little rocket that they build for Yoda. It's not like they're going on like trips and stuff. Like they just mostly just like stay where they are. And so he was like, well, shoot, we we need somebody to like take them on a ride oh well we got we got like sugi and her ship uh we can use them and like we can bring bring them back and like re- reuse these characters that were already done which is great and the ship that already works they did have to modify the ship uh when the ship was in the barn in the seven samurai episode uh-huh. it, it doesn't have a hull there's there's nothing there's no cargo like it, it can't hold anything the whole right. the whole bottom part of it d- just doesn't exist so they had to like add that on so it could carry things Interesting. Um, uh, Dave Filoni also talks about uh, w- he really likes the right when they show up. Uh, Sugi says something like, "All right, hurry it up, General! Like he, I'm charging by the minute or something." Yep. And Dave Filoni That's likens it to uh, like a taxi driver. <laughs> like we've been <laughs> on like this crazy, da- most dangerous game plan like island for months, and then someone shows up in a taxi cab, and they're like, oh, well, meter's running. And it's just this weird <laughs> juxtaposition. I mean, it makes sense that a taxi showed up, and they're the ones to, like, save the day or whatever, because, like, the, the Uber driver failed, you know? So, <laughs> right. this is, like, before Uber took off. Like, like now, it would just be, like, uh, Uber Pool, get out. Like, see you later. You yeah. know? And you're so in, like, you a would just drop them off and, too. And, yeah. and take off. So, yeah. um, I like the fact that it's a, a virtual, like, Wookiee clown car. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> they just keep coming. Like every scene that you see yeah. a Wookiee, there's like <laughs> another one of them. Yeah. Yep. They keep hopping out. Um, it's at this point that I wanted to point out like the super terrible fighting. And yes. uh, I think my notes are about yeah. like WWE Wookiee style. And there's like yeah. two Wookiees and two Trandoshans and there's straight like, slow arm throws i won't even call them punches <laughs> that like are ducked even slower and uh it, it looks like some high school choreography for like a wrestling scene uh that you would shoot in your basement yep mm-hmm. yeah. yeah i was endeared to it i enjoyed it a lot <laughs> But it was not on par with the fight scenes that we normally see, especially like the way that Ahsoka fights in this episode, Uh, the way that she moves. She's so acrobatic and she's exactly where she needs to be or where she doesn't need to be, you know, and uh, then we have like these not so big hairy Wookiees um, and it's just funny. Yeah, I I'm disappointed by like this specific action sequence of like the Wookiees and the younglings fighting on like the main deck of this thing. I think the mm-hmm. uh, I think it's a little later, but the the I think the only redeeming bit is when there's a Trandoshan like hiding behind one of the like one of the hover cars for cover, and then one of the younglings just like lifts it up and moves it, and then the Trandoshan's mm, yeah. like. Uh, what? And then he just gets shot. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and it's like, that was good. That was like good. Like, you, like right. you used all the parts that you had. Everything else is like punch, punch, kick. Oh, right. no, I fell off the ledge. Bye. Right. Yeah. yeah I don't think that Chewbacca like throws mashing. like countless numbers of, of these Trandoshans just like off right. their own ship. Um, but I will say that Wikipedia does call out the Wookiee with the blaster by name, and I I don't think I jotted it down, but uh, he is noted as being a sniper Wookiee, so <laughs> that's why I guess he so easily takes out these two Trandoshans from, like, 27 feet away. Okay. Because yeah, like they're both, they're both one-shot Tarful. kills. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Wookiee General Tarful is the only name I see besides Sugi and Serapus. And honestly, yeah. I thought he was a captain like after this. So what what did he do to get demoted from general to captain? <laughs> Something real bad. He Okay, he can we get to the, the uh, taxi drivers, uh, all right? Uh, <laughs> I want to yeah. talk about Ahsoka fighting Dar's dad because that's yes. my favorite bit in this whole episode. Okay. Go for it. This this scene is like the opposite of all the other fight scenes cuz it's like really interesting they like use the environment really well it starts and like ahsoka's like sneaking in and like trying to like use her jedi senses you're you've got all the trophies on the walls they've got trophies of just like people which is super creepy but then also like monsters like like there's like a wampa and like uh a gundark and like there's other like crazy stuff like how did you how did you kill that that's that's insane and I then, do have a list of all of the trophies in the trophy room that you can see. Uh, Wampa, Wookiee Pelts, Ithorian, Gungan, Gran, Skrilling, which I don't know what a Skrilling is, a Reek, a Rancor, a Dragon Snake, an ancient Mandalorian Neo Crusher helmet, teeth that may or may not belong to a Zillow Beast, a fully mounted Gundark, Mastiff Filoni, uh, a Narglatch, and... Did you guys catch the crystal skull? No. Nope. Definitely uh, not. So it wasn't until my second viewing, but I definitely saw this one. Um, it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Ahsoka jumps down, and you can see a crystal skull mounted somewhere in this trophy room. So the next time you guys next time you guys take a look at this episode, Lorenzo, I know you'll probably never see it again. Zach, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> uh, the next time you watch it. Look out for the crystal skull. It's totally yeah. there. So, I love the Zillow Beast. I love imagining these dumb Trandoshans <laughs> winning against a Zillow Beast somehow. That's insane. Yeah. Does it take like a so hundred? That of was them? like the Zillow Beast. Did they that was like gas it? No. <laughs> yeah. Did they gas it? The Zillow Beast tripped. 
on the Doug yeah. planet and then bring it here and then it just got tangled up in the briar patch and they pulled its teeth out and they were like, yeah, we win. Right. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's exactly how something like that would happen. There's no way they won okay. against the Zilla Beast. It was okay. pure luck. Pure luck is how they got the Zilla, potential Zilla Beast teeth. Fair enough. So the, the Ahsoka fighting Dar's dad is like, a really good like one-on-one fight and it's like them back and forth and you get to see like ahsoka be really acrobatic it's got a bunch of like good cinematography too of like there's a bit where dar's dad loses the knife and the knife like flies in the air and then it lands and like sticks into like a desk or something and then you, you get this shot that's like the the knife in the foreground and then ahsoka and, and dar's dad like fighting in the background behind the knife and it's just like like beautiful like it, oh it was so good right <laughs> i totally agree with you it's like um uh you know overall the the environments and things had so much detail and they were they were well designed and then there are certain aspects of this this episode and the last episode that were you could tell that somebody put a lot of time into and then part of it it's like eh, whatever, like, we're, you know, this is in between, like, the the other good stuff. We got some Wookiees fighting, like, that's good enough. Let's let's focus on this over here and and pour a little bit more time into yeah. this section. I do think it would have been awesome if um, when this knife landed, it, like, stuck a Trandoshan in the shoulder or something, <laughs> and he's like, ah, son of a bitch! <laughs> and you just see him running around, or yeah. uh, some some Jar Jar analog, or a C-3PO-esque something or other. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have amused me much. <laughs> just like a good old Kung Fu hustle knife scene. You remember yep. that scene? Nope. Yep. No? No, I was, oh just, uh, I was just agreeing with you. For yep. you know the context of your comment, <laughs> there's a scene where like he's holding a knife and he's trying to kill somebody. So oh, when he yes. throws the knife, he like pulls it back and he stabs his friend in the shoulder, and then like the knife sticks in. So he throws the handle, and yeah. the lady's like, "Who's throwing handles?" So he's like, "Why do you have a knife in there?" He's like, pulls it out. He's like, "Ah, no! Why'd you take it out?" And he puts it back in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a Trandoshan. Yep. Yep. But with a Trandoshan. Yeah. That. Yes. That whole thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> who wants to wrap up this uh, fight scene here? So then, uh, I believe Ahsoka what? kicks him, kicks him out like his own front door, and he like trips and falls on his railing to his death on his own house. Yeah, yeah. She walks with out everybody down below. Yeah, yeah the, everyone everybody watching. down below gets to see it. Yeah, he is enshrined with a uh, like a second circle of Wookies out of the Wookie clown car. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um. So at this point, I guess we we cut back to Coruscant, right? Yep. I now, a little wipe. I had the first time I watched this, I had looked down for like two seconds, and <laughs> I looked back up, and there was just all these other fucking people there. Um, <laughs> yep. We had I don't know. We had Anakin. We had Plo Koon. Let's see here. Mm, Plo Koon. Yoda ends up there. Yeah, Sugi's Mace still there. there. Yep. Mace yeah, Mace is there. Uh, and it was like this awkward conversation between Anakin and Ahsoka, and they're just like standing behind these Wookies, and then the Wookies uh, like walk off, and their conversation's done. And then on the other side, we just have like a second layer of of people, I guess, eavesdropping on this conversation. I don't know. I was like, what the fuck is happening here? Um, the second time I watched it, I did realize that they did relocate back to Coruscant because I was wondering like why and how all these people just showed up on Island four. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. It's not necessarily a blink and you'll miss it moment, but uh, it was quick enough that when I didn't pay attention for a couple of seconds, we relocated and um, I was, I was thoroughly confused the first time around. Um. I do have one other note on the Halo, which is Sugi's ship, and uh, that is about the Arbash that is painted on the front of it. Did you guys did you guys check this out at all? Do you, Zach, on your show, do you guys look into Arbash at all, or do you just kind of let it be what it is? Uh, I don't look into it on my own. Um, 
if they bring it up in the trivia gallery usually mm-hmm. on starwars.com um usually i'll mention it if it's something funny or interesting most right. of the time it's like it just says what it is and i don't right. care yeah i've 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 dove into this way way more than i should but this is this is a little <laughs> bit fun like the the nose artwork on her ship is a tuka doll with a bloody knife and uh the arabesque says nice playing with you so uh, I think that kind of personifies the attitude of the occupants of the ship. Um, yeah. Definitely doesn't have like a taxi checkerboard or anything like that. But uh, yeah, we're at the end of the episode here and we just get this weird conversation between Ahsoka and Anakin. Anakin is is totally blaming himself and like apologizing up and down and like, oh, I lost you and yada, yada, yada and all this stuff. And, and Ahsoka's like, no, like you did exactly what you should do. And, uh, like you taught me to survive. Like if it wasn't if it wasn't for your training, when I went lost, I never would have come back. You know. And she says, and the best thing is that while I was able to defend myself, I was also able to help others, uh, which is which is nice. Um, Anakin, I don't feel like responds like in the the most appropriate way. I don't know. It's just it's. To me, it was like this real awkward thing. And then when you add the fact that they're like behind a line of Wookiees and other people are listening and yeah. the, like the last thing that you see is Yoda like smirking to himself or something. God, or, fuck. Right. This fucking guy, it's th- that Yoda smirk just <laughs> fucking kills me. And it's like, you can tell he's just sitting there like, hmm, good job I'm doing, yes, hmm. And it's like, <laughs> no, man, you're making Darth Vader. That's what you're doing here. Like, <laughs> Right. He, he, he's sitting here, he's like, yes, it was a good idea to, to put these two together. Nothing bad will come of this. Yeah, definitely the way that I read it was that uh, what he is seeing is like Anakin is learning to let go, and he's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. narrator he was not like that's <laughs> he wasn't um uh yeah that's like a best case scenario for sure i guess like in terms of like yes good things are happening yep the uh, padawan came back and she's not dead even though she 100 percent got kidnapped <laughs> yeah again <laughs> right. also he's sitting there going like yep we did the right thing we just let her be kidnapped and didn't look Did. for her. <laughs> right. Did I want to know not. how many uh, clone troopers died when they had to like scour the entire area the tw- right. the the twelve times in the last episode. Like, uh, Anakin is just overworking these people. Like, no, look again. Like, look behind that uh, fungus fucking tree. Like, sir, we looked there. Do it again. <laughs> yeah. Right. Done eleven times. Yeah. Do it again. See and. That was my major complaint of the last episode where we had those flash sideways to uh-huh. Anakin three separate times, I think, right? So there was that. There was one in the middle, maybe. And then there was, like, the closing scene where he's like, we have to find her. And he's, like, looking at the map of the galaxy. Yep. <laughs> right? And then we get to this episode, and this is the first time we see him. This this is it. Like Now, now seeing, seeing Anakin stare at that map last week... Uh-huh. I kind of wish we got a scene of Kylo Ren just staring at a map of the galaxy like, where the fuck is Luke? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> where could he be? He's just <laughs> sitting there and like, oh, what the fuck? Right. Son like, of a bitch. Is I he here? There. Is he there? There's so many places. You literally see him pull out like a like a hollow red marker. He's like <laughs> drawing X's over planets. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like circling one. Yes, this Ta- will be it. Tatooine, right here. Island Scrabble four, on Tatooine. No. <laughs> Island four, no. <laughs> um. That's where Ahsoka was. <laughs> yeah, checking there, checking over here. Nope. And then you know, surely we'll just get it all wrapped up in about twenty seconds if uh, any of this plays <laughs> how this yeah. how this all tends to go. About uh, 22 seconds worth would be my guess. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's uh, that's the last thing I got for this one is we yeah. end with um, we end with Yoda, Yoda smirk. I was saying cue loud music. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Did I say Ahsoka right. smirking? Yoda smirking. 
No, Yoda smirking. You said Yoda smirking. Cool. Yoda be smirking. Good. Credits be rolling. That's what I meant. <laughs> yep, credits roll. Uh, I don't think I have any notes on the credits, except for that Chewbacca is credited as himself. And then, what? Uh, all the way, yeah, it says, like, in the credits, it's himself as Chewbacca, mm-hmm. as it would be. And then there is a special thanks to Peter Mayhew for being, like, the the life or the spirit of Chewbacca. Oh, so, yeah. Um, okay. That was interesting. I know that I know that Peter Mayhew was brought in on this episode. Uh, this is the beginning, I guess, of his consultation, of his Wookiee consultation or Chewbacca consultation, um, to to help the animators kind of get the mannerisms and whatnot correct. So, a uh, mm. couple questions about Chewie. How do you feel about Chewie in general in this episode? Uh, it feels weird to me. It feels like yeah. it's like a weird guest star. Okay. I I guess I'd rather I'd rather have an episode all about Chewie or an episode all about Ahsoka. It feels weird that he's here. Okay. And it doesn't seem to add anything to the Chewie lore. Shall yeah. We say. Yeah. 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 Like. Right. I, I agree with Zach. It it's like if this were were a sitcom, it'd be like the NBC previews would be like special guest starring. Chewbacca, and then like, as uh, yeah, and then you get the audience like, woo, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, like the Chewie has to stand there for twenty seconds and look, literally look at camera, like, yeah, definitely like when, like at the Wookiee reveal when when he comes up out of the out of the wreckage, I expected that to be like the end of the episode, and then like the next episode was gonna be all about him, but that was like eight minutes in. Yeah. Right. right. And then, like, a whole bunch of other shit happens. We see uh, some other Wookiees, so it kind of diminishes, like, Chewbacca being there. Uh, I felt that he was too thin and not hairy enough. Hmm. Yeah. It's I a little bit that. nitpicky, but there's... Uh, his limbs are more defined, and I know with, like, the, the animation style of this show, there's not as much flow to hair and whatnot, so right. I guess that would be a challenge in designing Wookiees. Um, his messenger bag thing was interesting. It was like they needed him to have something to carry all of this shit with him, so they just turned his bandolier into a messenger bag. That being said, I would totally buy one at Galaxy's Edge. Lorenzo, when you go next <laughs> week, you're going to let me know. Yeah, I'll let you know. Uh, a three-hour line or not. So Sure. I didn't say you had to buy me one. I was just saying let me know if it's just available. Say. I'll I'll see. I mean, likely I'll just be walking past the shop where I'm like, "Yep, that's that shop's full, <laughs> full of people." Gonna just gonna move along here. Move along, move along, move along indeed. <laughs> so, uh, last question about Chewie: How many Jedi do you think that he knows? Ooh, I don't. I'm I'm confused here too. I don't. I don't even. Do we know anything about Chewie prior to this? Canon wise? Oh, that's a good question. This is probably the first canonical huh. appearance of Chewie. Yeah. Huh. Do any of the books go farther back? I don't know. I, I haven't read any of the like Chewie I books. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if the aftermath books go any farther back. I know they might touch upon it, but I don't think so. So you know. That that's a that's a question I had. That's that's kind of where my brain gets lost with the old canon versus current canon sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm but, not uh, a I'm not a source for new canon right. literature. Like it, yeah. Like it looks like he's brought up in Battlefront Two and maybe a few other stories, but yeah, this might be like our first major meeting with him. Okay, well, that being said, uh, how do you feel about the introduction to the most famous Wookiee uh, that we know? Meh. Right, okay. yeah. Now, now that we put it on those terms, I just feel even worse about this episode. <laughs> he didn't even tear any arms off. I am in 100% agreement with you. Yeah. He broke Should an have arm. happened at least once. Yeah. He broke an arm, so we got that much. There was definitely one defined, like, Crack and crunch. 
when he like pulled an arm back. Yeah. Oh, that was the that was that was the, the sniper he had in his messenger bag. <laughs> that was the sniper rifle like getting dropped. Mm. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yep. I, it's weird. This Very would weird. be what fourteen years before Solo. Sure. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Something like that. Yeah. Because this is twenty BBY, and then. Solo is like what fifteen B or a five BBY something like that or ten to five BBY. Yeah, somewhere around there. Like it's it's, so it's is, that span. Yeah, so it's about ten years, ten to fifteen yeah. years before Solo. Right, because okay. Solo's yeah Solo takes place over five years. Is that what that is? Yeah, just because of the time jump. Yeah, it's like right. three or five years. I don't remember which, but um, that mm. is neither here nor there. In regards to this episode, um, I think we've pretty thoroughly covered it. So why don't we give this one a thumbs up, thumbs down? Uh, Dave Rave, Feloni Baloney, how you feeling? Zach, you can go first. Yeah, I'm thinking thumbs down. There's there's parts of this that I like, like uh, the that that Ahsoka versus Dar's dad fight. But there's so much that I just don't like. That I can't give it a thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Kevin. Yeah. I'm thumbs up on this one, man. I enjoy it. This one is fun. Uh, This and Padawan Lost were aired as essentially a double episode season finale for season three. Um, It's a fun 44 minutes of, of television. And even when you break it down into 22 and 22 and isolate them, uh, visually, I really like this episode. Uh, yeah, it's predictable. It's talk about plan, try to do plan. Plan doesn't work. Repeat, rinse, repeat a few times, right? Three times. Yep. But, um, you know, overall, I think it's fun. Uh, I remember the first time seeing this, like how excited I was to see Chewbacca. And, uh, you know, I thought it was cool. All right. So there you go. Uh, I'm with Zach on this one. This is a thumbs down for me. And this is a particularly strong thumbs down for me, actually. And it's for the reasons that Zach kind of mentioned, like the plan, execute plan, second plan, execute plan, third plan, execute plan. Oh, the thingy works. And then Deus Ex Machina, like Wookiee show up. Um yeah, we didn't even talk about that. How when they're trying to do something else, the machine just miraculously starts working and right. uh it like lights up and yeah. And it speaks Shirewook and yeah. uh the like how the saw blade and the fork on the on the speaking <laughs> yeah. spell. Burp, burp, burp. Yeah, like conk 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 Yeah. Like sir yeah. Uh so it, it's, it's just that visually I agree there are some cool parts. The giant set piece of the ship, the drop ship crashing is pretty cool. But mm-hmm. beyond that, like visually, it other than that, and I agree with Zach, the Ahsoka Dardad fight, which are a little bit calmer, relatively speaking, there's something so chaotic about just watching Wookiees and these Trandoshans just, like, flailing aimlessly at each other. It's just, like, I just kept watching it, and I'm like, what the actual hell is happening now? Like, what is, what's going on? And then, like, the only thing that would make sense is Chewie picking somebody up and throwing them over a rail. I'm like, okay, one is dead, but how many more are there? I'm just, like, so lost right now. Yeah. Yeah. I was also so, uh, disappointed that there were they didn't set any traps. Neither side seemed to set traps, right. and like in Predator and Most Dangerous Game, that's like a main part. A main part right. is like the hunter and the hunty are both trying to like out trap each other and like set up these right. elaborate things. And there's just nothing, and that would have like broken up a lot of the action. That would have broken up a lot of the like. Right oh, there's a Trandoshan, and we're just going to use the Force and, like, wipe his gun away. Like, you could have d- done something actually interesting and different with it. And they just didn't. Yeah. 
and like uh, to to your question, Kevin, too, the introduction of Chewbacca kind of messes things up for me. The the, the fact that we got Ahsoka <laughs> isolated. Well, the f- uh, think about it this way. No, th- you you know certain characters have to live, right? Yeah. We finally get an episode where Ahsoka gets isolated on a planet by herself. There's no help. She can't reach Anakin. And this is a season finale. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a good... Sh- this was my complaint last episode. This could have been a scary episode. Like, I mean, I'm not saying, like, fucking Annabelle terrifying for little children or anything like that. But I'm just saying, like, as family shows go, this could have been, like, a more intense episode in which, like, Ahsoka's really fucking getting tested on her own. Like, her skills mm-hmm. need to come to play. What happens? Chewie comes in, saves the day over and yeah. over and over. Uh. Right? So that's what I mean, like, Chewie kind of messes things up in terms of the flow of this episode. Like, okay. w- yeah. why is he here? Like, why was he necessary? Because he I was would've... kidnapped and... Uh... You know what? Maybe he wasn't even kidnapped. Maybe he was just working with these guys, and then Ahsoka <laughs> came in and fucking and crashed over. his ship. And <laughs> he's then, like, well, I didn't work with those guys. And he's oh, like, no. well, I don't know right. what to do now. I'll just stick with these people because I'm hungry, and that one looks really tasty. Right. But, like, so I hate to keep harping on this but because I know she's a fan favorite, but I don't like Ahsoka. And this was a really good episode. I know. I know, Zach. I, I don't like her at all. She has not grown on me the way she has on everybody else. This would have been a good episode for her to, like, turn it around for me, to show her worth, to show her skill. And we get a little bit of that. Yeah. But really, it's Chewie saving her ass, like, over and over. You know? So that's yep. that's yeah. my... That's my... That's why I... Th- for me, this is a solid thumbs down because of just the weird flatness tonally and in terms of tension of this episode. And as I think I told you last week, Kevin, I had a problem with last week's episode because we kept same, same thing. I had zero tension because we kept cutting away to Anakin. So I'm like, well, Anakin's out there looking for her. So like, it's, it's not even that I know she's alive after these episodes. It's just that, like even even for a little moment, I could have, you they could have made me believe that maybe this was the end for her, right? Like we're at the end of season three, okay. In a show that has a finite end, right? Yeah, right. Like, like I'm not saying go full George R R Martin, but like just just give me a taste of that. Just, just yeah, a that bit. that might be a stretch for Cartoon Network. George R. R. Oh, Martin no. might like, be a little much for them. Uh, Rebels got into some of it, you know. I mean, it took them a season and a half. But. Yeah, and I, I, I think the like with these kind of like interquill shows, they're always going to start to run into that problem of like, well, there's there's all these characters that we know aren't dead, and what do we do? Like, how do we set mm-hmm. stakes? And I think it, it's just you you write good. That's you can set stakes exactly. without. <laughs> like it's the character's life on the line being what the right. stakes are. Absolutely. There are plenty of other movies or shows based on true events where you know what happens every step of the way. Chernobyl and HBO right now is like a prime example. Like you know exactly what happens with Chernobyl and yet you watch that shit and it's like the most terrifying thing, you know? So what I just heard was you saying that uh, the Clone Wars is based on real events. So, um, like Chernobyl, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna <laughs> like Chernobyl. So I'm gonna just stick with that. Um, this one does wrap out season three. So I guess we'll we'll have to see what season four brings, and uh, we'll we'll fire up season four next week with an episode called Water War. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah. Not, Zaggy, not Water any? World. Yeah. Not, no, don't get not it mixed up with Water World. Multi billion dollar uh, movie over budget movie. <laughs> I don't I don't even know. I did watch that uh rewatch that one again recently, at least part of it, until I fell asleep. Did you really? And uh no. the part that I saw I enjoyed. 
So take that, Lorenzo. No, 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 no. Pretty cool stunt show at Universal, though. That's the one thing I'll give it. I don't know why that's still the property attached to that stunt show that's been around for about 20-some years now. Couldn't tell you. But, but it is. Wider world. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. And it's anyway, so popular Zach, they duplicated got, uh, it in Japan. I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so made like a decade after the fact. They're like, you know what Japan really wants? Waterworld stunt show. Let's go. Still got nothing. <laughs> so, Zach, sorry. <laughs> Keep cutting Kevin off here. That's all right. Uh, Zach, you got any? You got anything you want to plug? You got any? You want to you give your social security number out or your mailing address? or? Um, well, uh, I'll do two. Uh, uh, you can listen to my to our podcast, uh, uh, Recloned Podcast. It's at uh, reclonedpod.tumblr.com. Um, you can follow us on Twitter, I think, at reclonedpod. Um, yep. If you're interested in something that's not another Clone Wars podcast, I have a, a Twitter bot that's currently running uh, that's at clone underscore ebooks that uh, I took a bunch of Captain Rex quotes and I put them into uh, like uh, a rudimentary AI and it's just shitting out uh, Captain Rex quotes. <laughs> and some of them are pretty funny. It's it's a lot of garbage. It's, some of them are good. It's at clone underscore ebooks. Right, right on, nice. man. Yeah. Excellent. Lorenzo, if you want to uh, find us online and a succinctly compiled um you know form of locating all our information where would you go uh we have our own website not the nerds dot com what is it not the nerds podcast dot com nope just not the nerds dot com way to go we got that we got that i still haven't even actually i haven't gone it to myself but otherwise nice plug you know, lorenzo i know i know podcasts uh or, Social media is uh, not the nerds. At uh, fuck, yeah, I'm losing my mind. I'm we'll losing just, my we'll mind. Just, uh, I'm between like trips right now, so my brain has melted. My brain has officially fully melted. Um, you see, I was at, I was just gonna plug nothingnerds.com because no. all of the links are down there at the bottom, and then you don't have to give People them out every it. time. But <laughs> people uh, will find it. Like, rate, subscribe us on wherever you're listening to us. Check us right. out on YouTube. All the stuff gets filtered through there also. So, uh, you know, smash that like button, as <laughs> they say. Give us a subscription Indeed. there. That would be great. Again, next week is Water War. Zach, thank you very much, sir. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah, I appreciate your time. So, uh, yeah. until next week, I've been Kevin. Lorenzo here, also with Zach. These aren't the nerds you're looking for. Bye bye.